Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. There are some new locations coming to Star Citizen Alpha 3.17.2, but not only that, there are also NPCs that are now able to move around these locations more freely than before, and some of these new locations are planet side, and previously this would have caused a lot of issues for those NPCs to move around them. Some of the derelicts that you are going to discover in 3.17.2 are going to be settlements. These are much more integrated into the environment, and they've been lived in for years, and um, as part of that they maybe have had some ramshackle generators and living areas built um, from them. Parts of them have been salvaged and scavenged and um, other bits have been made into um, sort of little bedrooms or whatever. You'll have signs of that area being used for um, literally little, little settlements, so water filters, things like that might have been built too. You'll see settlements built out of the Mighty Reclaimer, which is a massive ship, so it's not just going to be um, as settlements either, you'll be able to see derelict and, and wrecked and reclaimers in space now. you see them crashed on the ground. Wrecks will range in age as well. Older ones will look like they're rusted or damaged or have been reclaimed by nature and they've made these derelicts and settlements FPS and mission friendly. So you're going to see lots of missions and be they combat missions or um, delivery missions all associated with them. And these wrecks aren't just placed on planets willy nilly. You'll also see indications that there's a wreck in that area Area because the ground is going to uh, be gouged and um, have scraping along the floor. The trees nearby are going to be broken and um, its sort of uh, final resting place is quite clear the way it sort of came in its trajectory and slid along the floor. I wouldn't expect that with sort of wrecks that happen during normal gameplay though. So if you take out a ship, blow it up um, and it sort of crashes on a planet, don't expect the ground to be gouged and trees to be destroyed. But maybe, maybe that's the plan in the future. Who knows? That would be pretty cool if it is. Inside the wreck that Cloud Imperium showed, it appears to have been very much taken back by nature, with plants growing on the inside. They also mentioned that some ships might have older parts or areas showing that they're from an older time with older tech. Another one of the major updates in 3.17.2 is the nav mesh updates. This allows them to fill locations with NPCs that can also patrol those areas, track players, move between those areas, actually move on the surface of a planet and automatically dynamically take into account any sort of height differences um, and work out where they can actually move to and um, what the best sort of pathway around an obstacle is. NPCs moving around more organic spaces and surfaces like this is a big deal and Clan Imperium are going to be able to use this system to drop in other points of interest and do the same stuff. So you're going to start to see lots more points of interest on planets. You're going to start to see NPCs much more readily being able to turn up at these locations, patrol these locations, move around these locations. And it's also the sort of tech they need to have animals in game and that sort of stuff because you don't want animals just running around cities or something like that. You want them to be able to run around the surfaces of planets. Some missions that you might have at these settlements and wrecks could be to clear out enemy factions or defend an area or pick up and delivery missions. There will be a range of combat and non-combat missions going forward. They now have the tools to be able to place points of interest and NPs around them in a procedurally assisted way so they can actually fill whole planets out with this type of point of interest, this type of content. However, obviously they're building uh, more and more of the parts for different types of wrecks, different types of settlement. You'll see more and more locations coming in the future and better AI driving the NPCs as they evolve that nav mesh tech further. There are multiple new settlements and derelict locations both on ground and in space for players to find in Alpha 3.17.2. So it's not just a single location. You're going to be able to find some of these areas relatively easy by just um, taking missions that will then um, lead you to them. But some um, interesting sort of um, areas to explore and find loot in for sure. The Siege of Orison is Star Citizen 3.17.2's latest dynamic event and it's a complex large-scale mission. It is FPS focused and it is PVE focused as an event. So it's on the floating platforms of Orison. You'll take shuttles in with other players to help take back these areas from the nine tails who have occupied it it takes away your powerful ships it means you are on the ground you want to use fps weapons you want to have armor you'll want to have uh, a variety of other gear you want to have medical tools it will have players being able to jump in with other players that are already participating on the event and then that mission and requires a time and people investment to complete you will quite readily be working with people that you haven't worked with or played with before. You might join in with an org, but 
other people can come along and help you beyond that as well. There are a lot of NPC hostiles and it is supposed to have some difficulty, this sort of um, dynamic event. The event is, as I said, PvE in nature. There aren't systems to support PvP for it. However, it doesn't rule it out entirely. There's just very little reason to PvP, although friendly fire will be a thing. Hopefully, Clown Imperium will make it so that friendly fire isn't too sort of like aggressive. So if I accidentally hit my friend once, I don't then just get obliterated by everyone in the area going, PvP! But with this event, there are new visitable platforms with varying levels of battle scars at Orison. There's, as I said, a shuttle that will take you um, to them. And then there's a load of NPC bad guys. There's a load of nine tails um, guys to take down and objectives there to push forward to um, more and more platforms to eventually complete that mission. There is quite a range of scenes and areas and um, you'll probably want to explore. You want a big battle in a city? Then this event is for you and you can explore these interesting locations uh, that have been sort of uh, war-torn somewhat. This brings a load of the FPS gameplay and mechanics together with AI, healing, gunplay and general movement and animations all coming together on a large scale. And all of this is in for Alpha 3.17.2, which is fantastic. New locations, a new dynamic event, an AI able to traverse planet surfaces, at least around some of these new locations. This patch is shaping up to be an amazing one for gameplay. This is all in conjunction with other features that are coming with the patch. Derelict colonial outposts, which we haven't seen too much on yet. Uh, new space stations, NPCs being able to come in dropships to reinforce some areas and delivery missions expanding to the illegal side too. There's a, just a huge amount of gameplay there and as long as the patch uh, has a lot of bug fixes and is stable and is performant, then it's going to be fantastic. Star Citizen Alpha 3.17.2 is currently in its Eva Cardi testing phase and should be going out to Wave 1 PTU testing in the not too distant future and then we can talk a lot more about um, the patch in a bit more detail, exactly what the patch notes are, exactly what they're planning and actually sh shoot some gameplay uh, and video of in-game in that latest patch. I'm expecting that first Wave PTU by the end of June and then a live release soonish after that sort of uh, maybe mid-July sort of, I wouldn't expect it uh, to go past that, but we'll have to wait and see what t testing brings because we are at the mercy of PTU testing bugs that they find. And then once 3.17.2 is released, 3.18 should go into testing pretty much straight away. But what do you think? Are you excited for 3.17.2? It does seem to have expanded quite a bit in terms of gameplay area, points of interest, missions and such, but not a huge amount of um, sort of like entirely new features. But it's still pretty good in terms of gameplay. So is that something that you prefer at this stage or do you prefer sort of entirely new um, gameplay loops like salvage as a top priority? Are you going to be getting involved with the PTU phase or wait until live? Does the FPS PvE nature of the Siege of Horizon excite you or disinterest you? Do you think there's going to be problems with troubling PvPers there? Or do you think, actually, it's probably going to be relatively troll-free? To be honest, I'm always up for um, a level of fun, sort of chill PvP if it sort of turns up naturally. Uh, I just don't want anything to be sort of too aggressive and problematic where it's just constantly there. I don't want to be going into the Siege of Horizon event and just always have to worry about PvPers and them be in some sort of a weird area where they're just sniping and you're like, like lol, we, we, we're not getting attacked by the Nine Dales uh, because we're sort of like in a weird location, but we can just snipe people and they're not prepared for it. I like honor-based PvP and piracy where a pirate will turn up and go, um, give me this money or I'm gonna blow you up. Went off on a bit of a tangent there, but tell me what you think of PvP, PvE and piracy. I know lots of people have lots of different views on uh, all those gameplay elements coming together and that's sort of totally fine. I do want my channel uh, and my comment sections to be a, a place where people can discuss that sort of stuff in a, in a free way without being angry and grumpy at each other. But whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Hello, it's me, the Qu
Queen. It's my Platinum Jubilee this year, and safety and security are paramount. Lots of people ask me why we need a Queen and NordVPN. I defend the world with my scepter and crown, preventing those who do it harm from carrying out their evil deeds, channeling the power of NordVPN.com forward slash board gamer and my divine right, I can overcome any obstacle, and so can you, by using the links below to get great deals and better internet accessibility, security, and encryption acidosity. I don't know what that word was that I was trying to say, but I am the queen! I will never be defeated! Just like NordVPN.com sword slash board gamer! That wasn't the queen at all. It was me. It was board gamer. I've got to say this at the end, actually, now, just in case someone says I'm impersonating the queen. Try to get her, but she was too busy. She says got like a busy weekend or something. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For June, we're giving away the newly released RSI Scorpius Heavy Fighter. This is a two-seater X-Wing styled ship with a powerful loadout and a turret that can move from the top to the bottom of the ship, giving it a much better range of firing arcs. To be in for a chance of winning that, comment on any of my videos made during this month. More details in the description below. Please also consider supporting the channel by becoming a member with the join button under my videos, or becoming a Patreon, or even donating with a thanks button or donations in the descriptions below. Star Citizen is getting more and more flesh on its bones, and there's always news coming out, and we love to cover that, and we're only able to do that because of all of you watching, and all the amazing people that go the extra mile. Whether it's commenting, sharing our videos, chucking money at us, or whatever, thank you so much. I hope you have a great June, please take care, and I'll see you in the verse.